I was hanging out with my parents and family on Christmas Day and was driving to the store listening to News Radio 590 KLBJ. We'd forgotten some eggs, so I was driving over to get some eggs, trying to find a store that was open, and, and I and I heard the report, and I thought, please let it be a real terrorist. Please let it be some lone nut. Please don't let this be the government again. Please don't let this be a patsy or a provocateur op or a setup. Please, please, because I want to know the government isn't doing this. I want to think everything's all right. It's a million times less scary to think it's rogue people in caves doing this. And then sure enough, that night I got online and read the mainstream media reports, and then Saturday and today, and even mainstream media. I've got four or five British newspapers, a Canadian paper, a U.S. paper, saying, did, did the U.S. and did the Europeans let this happen, and why? It's the same story it always is. His dad said, "My a rich banker, said, my son's gotten in with extremists, he's planning something, and the FBI wasn't allowed to put him on the terror watch list. When they put congressmen on it, they put a million, 300,000 plus now Americans with no criminal records on it. They put you on it if you've got bad credit. They've had federal marshals go public about that and speak out against it. Uh, this guy was protected. Uh, this guy was brought to the airport, and, and we're going to cover this after the break. He was brought to the airport by a sharp-dressed man in a suit, led past security. The man ordered security to stand down. He was brought right up to the gate. They have higher levels of security in Europe than we even have here. It's unbelievable. He's brought to the gate without a passport or identification and put on the plane. And then you've got him not on the terror watch list. It's just like the Fort Hood shooter for two years saying he was going to kill people, sending emails who he thought was an al-Qaeda. Of course, it was the CIA. This cleric he was under is openly CIA. What, three of the last patsies came from this guy? I mean, these are setups, folks. These are setups guaranteed. So it's come out in court documents in England and in India that the only patsy they captured was a double agent for the United States. When you hear the United States, folks, it's not the United States. It's the foreign banks that have taken over our country, taken over our military, and use it as their own private mercenary army. And I've seen this MO over and over again. I remember it was in the Jerusalem Post. It was in UPI, what, six years ago? Israel admitted that they created fake al-Qaeda groups to stage terror attacks in Israel, killing Israelis as a pretext. The so-called right-wing government at the time created fake al-Qaeda groups to get them to attack their own people so their own people would give up their rights. And the British, of course, it's been all over the, the major British news the last five, six years. It's been declassified that the British government, because a bunch of the commandos went public, one of them we interviewed, Agent Steak Knife, later committed suicide. He was running for his life when we had him on the interviews we've done. I've interviewed Hamid Gull, the former head of Pakistani intelligence, when the U.S. was running the war against the uh, against the Russians. Nobody gets an interview with Hamid Gull, but uh, or Ghoul, depending on how you pronounce it. But he came on this show because we're known worldwide. Uh, for being fair and balanced, unlike some people that use that uh, catch term. We actually want the truth. But the issue here is that you have this ultra-rich banker, his son living in lavish apartments in London, in Dubai, you know, the kind of place rock stars live in, and then suddenly a man in a fancy suit, this is mainstream news, in Europe, marches him past security with his syringe bomb or whatever it is. They're now saying the, the passengers thought it was firecrackers, but they're saying sophisticated. 
You know, just like Saddam had Death Star weapons and EMP weapons and nukes that were so deadly they could even kill Superman. Uh, well, this guy had stuff that bad. And so he just struts right past security, and it's the same in every case. Oh, yeah, uh, nine of the 19 9 hijackers a year before 9-11 went to a uh, Mumbai terror summit and then were allowed back into the U.S. And, and I had uh, Mr. Springman, the head of the U.S. Embassy in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, on. And he said that he wouldn't let them in because they had terrorized Mohammed Atta and others. And the CIA called him up and said, look, th th these are U.S. agents and, and they have a terrorist cover story. That's their cover. Then they got back in the United States and were trained at U.S. military bases in Norman, Oklahoma, Pensacola, uh, Pensacola Naval Air Station, and the Defense Language School of Monterey Bay, California. And that was in CNBC, Associated Press. The head, Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Butler, the head of the Defense Language School, the dean, went public one month after 9-11 in the Associated Press saying, I don't know what happened with 9-11, but it's, somehow it's an inside job because these guys were trained at my base and are high-level spies. That's in the Associated Press. I, I mean, for those of you that say, oh, I don't want to hear 9-11 is an inside job, what else is it? You got passports falling out of the sky that the FBI just so happens to find at ground zero the first day. Give me a break. Uh, you've got the people training at U.S. military bases. It's the same thing with Hassan out at Fort Hood. He's visiting the topless bars. He's partying hardy. He's running around for several years talking about how he's going to jihad and kill everybody and how much he hates the president and how uh, he loves suicide bombers. Folks, if you're in the Army and you criticize the president in any way, you're lucky if all you get is a dishonorable discharge and not a court-martial. Stephen Butler, they started a court-martial on him till he agreed to shut up. Just for saying, all I know is the, the hijackers were trained at my base. Something's going on. Muhammad Atta sat in my class. What, he's not supposed to tell the truth? He tells the truth and they start court martial on him. Hassan can run around. Folks, it's not political correctness that they didn't bust him. It's not political correctness that every single time... Three months ago, the would-be bomber up in Illinois turned out the FBI created the group, found the people, let it, found some prisoners, some ex-con idiots, promised to pay them a bunch of money if they drive a bomb into a building. That is purely provocateur. They didn't go out and find a group that was planning it and stop them. They go out and create the groups. Texas Monthly, 1998, Bumster Award to the FBI, creating a Klan group and trying to get them to blow up a chemical plant in Fort Worth, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, this latest character, if you didn't know, if you visit InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.com right now, if you go there, we have detailed articles that break it all down for you so you can check it out for yourself and, and read the facts for yourself. There's an article up on PrisonPlanet.com. Bomber had no passport. Helped aboard plane by sharp-dressed man. But, but I'm not the only one with my website saying that. We've got a bunch of mainstream news articles here from mainstream media. Here's the UK Daily Mail. Why was he ever allowed to fly? Syringe bomber had been barred from Britain, was on terror list, and even his father had warned U.S. Yeah, the FBI tried to put him on the terror watch list, and someone ordered it pulled off. It's the same story. At the bare minimum, they find these fruitcakes, these mentally ill people, and they give them the weapons and then protect them getting on the airplanes to do it. We know a lot of terror is provocateur. That is incredibly criminal. He could have brought that plane down. Bare minimum, this was a setup. 
bare minimum, they let him do it, and they let Hassan do it, bare minimum. But it gets worse from there. As the days and weeks unfold, just like with the Fort Hood shooting, the evidence always emerges, and I wish it didn't, that this is going to be a complete inside job. And I'll guarantee you this guy was hopped up on drugs, hypnotized just like Sirhan Sirhan with the polka-dotted dress lady putting the drugs in his drink and his blood was tested and the guy that shot Bobby Kennedy in the back on record was CIA and four CIA guys were photographed inside the building and the LAPD coroner said that none of Sirhan's 22 bullets hit him, that he was all shot in the back by the CIA officer. Doesn't matter, they get away with it. That's how they do this, folks. This guy is a patsy. He seems stunned. He seemed to not know what had just happened. 